Hello everybody and welcome to the Isolation Conversation with me, Mark Stokes. A series of videos designed to discuss all things digital whilst working remotely in isolation. This week we're on episode 2, all about enabling your remote workforce and how organisations such as Deloitte and Avpoint are facilitating the wellness and well-being of their remote workers. Hi everybody, well thank you for joining me now. Um, I've got some good friends with me today. I've got Alex, I've got Rob and I've got Pom and we're going to be talking about isolation, remote working and actually how we manage the well-being um, and the wellness of our employees while they're at home, while they're in isolation and maybe they're struggling with a situation they're not used to being in. Um, so what I'll do, I'll let everyone go do a quick introduction. Um, you all know who I am uh, by now, Mark from Atalo. Um, so we'll do a quick introduction, maybe ask uh, the guys something they learned in the last week, and then we'll go and have a chat about what they've done in their own organisations to facilitate um, home working and make sure their employees are happy, safe and, uh, and, and well. So, OK, quick round table. So I don't know who wants to go first. Um, should I pick on someone or? Yeah, I'll go first, uh, seeing okay. as I'm, not the, uh, I'm the only one who's not a techie here. Um, my name is Pom, I'm the founder of Human Method, um, head coach and, uh, sorry, head, um, head coach and wellness coach at um, The Space. Um, basically, I'm a health and wellness coach um, and I work with uh, professionals mainly um, who, who live like busy lives, stressful environments, work environments mainly, and, um, and we help them physically, you know, uh, training, uh, mobilizing, um, just with their with their health in general, nutrition, hydration, all the rest of it, and and also uh, emotionally as well, whatever that means. Yeah, so um, it's not a gym, um, it's a space, and that's why we're able to cater for for all of that kind of that holistic approach uh, and to, to helping the the human, hence human method. Nice, um, I love that angle. So, so something you something you learned this week. Yeah, so one thing I've learned uh, in the past couple of weeks is that. Um, the stuff that I preach, um, I'm probably um, operating at about 60%, if that, um, of all the stuff that I'm I'm helping people with daily. And <coughs> these past two weeks has really highlighted that uh, because I've flipped things around so much, and and my kind of working from home uh, is, is completely different. I've got so much more headspace and every other type of space you can think of. Uh, in, a, in a positive way, so uh, which, mm. which we'll move on to, uh, and I'm sure we'll we'll get get into as it goes through. Interesting. I find it fascinating the number of people, and we're probably the same included, who, uh, who don't practice what they preach, <laughs> or yeah, not to sure. full extent. I think we're all guilty of that. Fine. Yep. Yeah, okay. Alex, do you want to go next? Yeah, I'll go next. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Alexandra. Um, I'm part of Avpoint. I'm um, I'm the HR generalist, uh, but I cover EMEA. So I'm based in London, which is our headquarters in Europe. And um, along with the rest of my team, we cover seven regions. Uh, what I've learned in the past week or so is that now more than ever, I think, Technology is so important um, and collaboration as well. Um, it's yeah, it's it's been, I think, life changing for everyone. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, it's uh, we've had to learn how to adapt and everything else. But yeah, more than ever, technology, collaboration, teamwork, all of that come into play now. Cool. Rob? Yeah, hey, everybody. Uh, so my name is Rob Foster. I am um, an office apps and services or servers MVP. I can't they keep changing the name, but uh, I've been a Microsoft MVP for about uh, about 14, 15 years now. And um, uh, I, professionally, I, I work at Deloitte. So I lead the um, the digital collab, one of the digital collaboration teams here. So helping our internal people, ironically, work from home. So we've had, well, Deloitte's been a very virtual organization for a long time. So we've, we, you know, I've worked from home for over 10 years. Um, and we're starting to have the need to share the those experiences across our firm. So we went from about, I would say 130,000, 150,000 people using uh, Microsoft Teams uh, to well over 400,000. So we in a period of like 
10 days, right? So, so we've really, um, we've really ramped up uh, the, the, the initiative for the work from home tools where we're, we're um, uh, and, and being able to hopefully keep people in, keep them safe um, and able to keep in contact with not only their, the, you know, the other employees that they work with, but also our customers. So it's been, um, it's been a wild couple, couple of weeks for me anyway. <laughs> Um, I also host a podcast called Text Planning, and you can uh, you can check that out at textplanning.net. Um, now, one of the major things that I've learned over the past couple of weeks is um, it's not technology related at all, to be honest. I mean, it, and it, it's 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 really kind of more into what Palm is is, is probably going to talk about is is the um, the human interaction of of just reaching out to your team members and having that virtual coffee session or just not talking about work, right? Just get out of the robotics of, of talking about, oh, what are we doing on this project and blah, blah, blah. But just, hey, how are you doing physically? Is your family safe? Are you safe and healthy and happy? And and, and do you need anything? It's those little things that I'm, I'm finding to be really amazing for me um, because it really helps me not only understand that I'm okay, but also the people around me are okay as well. And, and it's so important to check in with everybody. I mean, there's just the technology makes that possible, but it's 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 something that I've I've really picked up on that that our our, our people need, whether you think they need it or not, they need it. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's um, something that we've done as well, um, at Tolo. So um, over the last week, I've literally sent uh, started sending around a little survey every every couple of days on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just to uh, rate how you're feeling on a, a one to ten. You know, from absolutely rubbish to you know euphoric. And then, you know, when did you last get some exercise? So it just kind of goes out with an adaptive card. They can just click it, put a little comment if they want to. And surprising some of the people that you think are absolutely fine, but then they kind of rate themselves quite low. And so, oh, actually, maybe that person is struggling a bit more than, than we realise. So, yeah, let's just have someone reach out to them. That I, I would echo that. And that's the thing we've learned the most is it's not always the people you think they're going to struggle that struggle. And it's not always the people you think are going to be all right that are all right. I can definitely echo that from our own. You know, you know, I, I've been. I was talking to my wife about this, and, and it's not really a technology. I, mean, I guess it is kind of a, a, a. We're at a perfect place in in consumer technology as well, right? So I, we, you know, I'm I'm kind of here to talk about the business side of technology and 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 kind of what we're doing. But at the consumer side of technology, this hit at a perfect time in all of our lives, right? Um, I think about maybe like 10 years ago or 20 years ago, um, there was no uh, DoorDash or Uber Eats, or you couldn't really order online or get food delivered to groceries delivered to your car from the, from the grocery. That was not a thing right up until the last few years. And I, I really think that the world has been set up, uh, in a way that it's kept a lot of the, 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 the people healthier just because of the things, the apps that are available for our phones. And we can do, and we use these in our everyday lives, right? Where we can have food delivered to us. We don't have to get out and, and mingle with the, the, um, the, the, you know, with people. And, and I think that's, um, it, it's a terrible thing that's happened to the world, but I think that we are so fortunate to live in the time that we live in right now. Right. So I had to think about that a lot when I'm seeing the news of all the, the bad stuff that's going on that, you know, there is a lot of good stuff that has happened to get us to this point to where we're in the best possible situation that we could be in right now, uh, just due to the technology that's available to us. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, I think uh, I think this should be our wake up call uh, in terms of, you know, the way we interact, like you said, Rob, you know, um, the, the fact that we don't think about um, asking people how they are, how their family are on a daily basis anyway, is is quite shocking. And now all of a sudden, you know, it's brought that to the forefront. The only times we tend to, to have those thoughts or feelings is, is when something bad happens. You know, uh, if a family member goes into hospital, all of a sudden, boom, just like that, you'll drop everything. Uh, work doesn't matter. You know, all these things that, that are so important that you can't go and visit your mom. Um, all of a sudden doesn't matter anymore because she's not well and everyone in the family gathers around right and for a couple of days um it's um it's everyone's really close and then they uh and then they it, everyone forgets right so um yeah it's 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 really really important that, that we're um 
that, that this has happened. You know, um, we, we we need to be reminded that those things that are important when it matters are important all the time, and they should come first as a priority. So, yeah, so Alex, from a, a HR perspective, then obviously um, employees normally go through various touch points and um, review cycles, things like that, which is meant to be all around kind of assessing them, engaging them, seeing how they are. Um, I guess there's a question there for is that enough what we normally do on quarterly reviews? And, um, you know, from a HR perspective, what, what do you guys do to, to ensure that employee happiness normally before we get into this situation and then maybe how it's different uh, in the situation we're in now? So we're very human in our HR approach. Uh, I'd say normally on a daily basis, because we see everyone in the office, I would always ask them about, ask them about their families or how they're doing and everything else. So it's not just all work related for us. Um, and we're definitely missing that at this moment in time. That's why I'm saying it's so important to keep connected and keep the conversations going. And because, yeah, people get tend to get isolated um, and uh, maybe, you know, it's maybe sometimes you don't want to reach out to them because you think they're too busy and all of that. But I think, yeah, it's important to keep it going and keep the conversation open. And yeah, it doesn't have to be about work. It can be about anything. Um, but yeah, I'd say we're very, yeah, like I said, human in our in our interaction with them. We're not... Um, uh, very, you know, this is the process, that's it. We don't talk to you the rest of the time. That's the only time we talk to you guys. We're, we have an open space as well, so um, I don't have my own office. Uh, we all sit together. I see the guys every day. They see me there every day. They know how to reach me. They know to come to me for anything. So, yeah, I like, I like it. <laughs> yeah, cool. So do you... I mean, that's an interesting point because I guess in a lot of ways, technology becomes a barrier then, doesn't it? Technology lets people put a cover up, but um, the fact is really to understand people's feelings, you need that physical face-to-face, -face, don't you? You need that interaction to really kind of judge micro gestures or things like that, you know, when maybe they're saying, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, but you know, really that that not. But if you're just typing on a bit of text or in Teams or something, then you may not get that, that true uh, reflection. Yeah. No, and that's why we tried. I, I've been I've been doing this since we've all started working from home, just setting up calls, setting up meetings with them, um, and they all to to reach out. They know to reach out to me as well for any chats, any types of things. So interesting. Just take a quick um, round table of this uh, then on what the company is currently doing. Is it a case that um, everyone is literally out of the office and working from home? Um, have you got people who have been furloughed? Have you got um, other situations? How, what What is happening with the people in your organisations kind of at the moment so from a general perspective? Rob, uh, Deloitte? If, if, if I go first, because it's easy for me because yeah, sure. uh, I'm on my own. It's just me. Um, and and my, my business is completely different. So in terms of, of, of uh, my business, I'm into face-to-face -face coaching most of the time. Uh, I do have a hybrid model anyway in place where, you know, I, I do remote coaching or I do a, a bit of both where they come into the space and I train them remotely. So this has just been a, a bit of a transition period for the guys who are trained in person uh, to go fully remote. Um, it was a very kind of easy transition because they were already aware of the that, that side of it you know it just wasn't all of the time um as far as as far as i'm concerned and, and for me it's just uh it's business as usual you know the only difference is i've created a little studio here right next to me uh in my dining room uh with a few bits of kit and uh and i, I set up my zoom calls and, and and we're good to go so it's just a transitioning from like actually coming into that physical space where it's like, okay, cool, I'm out of work and I'm not thinking about anything, any of my family stuff or anything. I leave all of the door and I can just come in and do what I need to do. Whereas now they're in that same family environment, still trying to work out or whatever they're trying to do to get the uh, the the stuff that they need. That's cool. Do you, do you feel that most people have embraced that um, remote um, interface, or do you think some of them who prefer the physical have actually 
dropped off and said, we'll take a break through this period and, and connect back up yeah, afterwards? So I've already had many people like drop off. I'm, um, I'm still in touch with the guys who, who still don't do the live sessions. There's a couple who don't do the live sessions. And that's just because of like anxiety and things like that, which is completely understandable. For those people, they've gone fully remote in the way I coach someone remotely in terms of um, uh, not actual video call like this. It would be more of a, I'll send you your program via, via my communication app and then we'll, we'll communicate through that and, and via text and phone calls and stuff like that. So um, I've got a couple of those guys, but the majority of people have just embraced the, let's jump on the video call I'm not really sure what it's all about. You know, I've got a couple of guys who are completely not tech savvy at all. Who, you know, will, their, their first kind of five minutes of Zoom is like this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, um, and then they start talking and I can't hear them and you've got to try and communicate to them. But, um, but that's all part of the fun, you know. And, uh, and, and again, it's, it's where we're headed. You know, tech is going to be like huge. It's already huge, but even more so now, I think, um, uh, Rob, you touched on it in terms of the, the times and the way things are going in terms of the shopping and all that kind of stuff. We're we're headed that way anyway. This is just a kickstart into into all of that, isn't it? And I think yeah. it could be a good thing. So, definitely. So, Rob, uh, if Deloitte retained all of its staff, have you had to make any um, sort of changes? I, I guess you're in a. I guess with the type of work Deloitte does, you're in a position where you're kind of mopping up a lot of mess of businesses that are struggling. I guess you kind of cover a lot of bases so do you manage to retain all the staff in Deloitte or have you had any changes? It, that was probably the most surprising news that I got last week was that yes we have been able to retain our employees and and you know we we seem to be thriving through this right and in and, and that in that we're able to provide a a level of service to our customers that also everybody's struggling with this right and and they are in turn looking to us because i've been working from home for like 10 years right so deloitte has always been really flexible with where you work and it's kind of the that we we adopted about 10 maybe longer 10 years ago longer or longer um we're not paying you for where you do your work, but the work that you do, right? And and so that's that's kind of the, been the mantra at Deloitte, uh, at least from my perspective, um, for uh, many many years. And we we're able to take that experience and and bring it to our customers that have not, right? Because there's, I mean, look at Microsoft, right? If you're in Redmond, um, then chances are likely you're in the office every day up until this, right? So the people at Microsoft even are are start having to get used to to working from home, where we've been doing it for many many years, and we're we're able to really bring that experience into helping our customers get that set up and going for themselves as well. So we we've been. I figured we would see some furloughs or layoffs, but we've really been thriving in this. Now, knock on wood, that's so far. <laughs> Who knows what the future is going to hold? But I've been really happy with that. Um, you know, with, with with doing that. Now, our employees are, you know, really starting to adopt our tools, and we we've had. As, as, as Deloitte's a big multinational company, right? So we've got a lot of people in a lot of different countries. And as you span across, I mean, in the U.S., it's pretty pretty simple, right? You've got people, you know, across the U.S. using tools. And there's, you know, as long as you can, you know, the data's in the U.S., you're good. As you expand out into Europe, right, it gets a little a little squirrely, right? So you get, you know, the, the data in Germany has to be treated a certain way. The data in France, the data in the U.K., you know, all of this stuff has to be treated, treated a certain way. And... What we've done is been able to really um, accelerate the conversations that we have that we're we've been having around the data residency um, to more getting people to be able to collaborate remotely um, has been the driving factor rather than oh we've got to wait till this and this security person has to sign off because of blah 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 all of that stuff. I mean, it's still very important and we still have to make sure our bases are covered, but those conversations that were taking months before happened over a period of days, right? So as long as we could meet the data residency requirements, um, we were able to immediately enable this stuff. And like I said uh, earlier, we went, uh, in my intro, we went from about 140, 150,000 users on Teams um, to now well over 400,000. So we've seen about a 600% increase in the collaboration tool space um, that's been that's been amazing to see um, and, and it's great because it is providing people a a, a benefit um, to be able to still be productive no matter where they are and chances are likely they're at home <laughs> and and I think that's um, that's something that 
going forward, and maybe this is a, a conversation for for uh, for HR, is going forward. I mean, I wonder how this is going to change our workforce, right, across the board, not not just at Deloitte, but across the board. People that traditionally went into offices anymore are starting to realize that they don't have to be in an office. So what does that mean for leasing office space? What does that mean for, you know, I'm not going to go to an office like it. What I don't go to the office. When I go to the office, I don't. I don't go to my desk. I go to a a kiosk and I can check out a workspace, right? So it's kind of a hoteling system. Um, I don't have a, an assigned seat or a desk. I just go check something out. If I need a conference room, I get that. If I need a desk, I get that or whatever. Um, is that going to be the way that everybody works in the future, right? Because it is the where you sit doesn't really matter anymore at this point right now. And this happened over a period of like two weeks, right? Where you sit and who you sit by and all of that stuff is, is irrelevant. Um, so I'm really wondering what does that mean going forward? I think it's personal preference as well. Um, so I'd say for me, working from home is okay, but I'd rather be in the office only because I get to see everyone and talk to everyone um, and maintain that office culture and those relationships. Now, we're pretty flexible as well. So we've had people working from home for a long time and we, we have people who hot desk a lot as well. So, um, yeah, for us, it's not, I don't think it's going to be a major change in terms of that because people who prefer to work from the office and, um, yeah, they enjoy the office culture, there's, they'll still come in. People who want to uh, be flexible, they have that flexibility and they can, yeah, just hot desk and um, mix it. Yeah, definitely. I think, Rob, you, uh, something you mentioned, um, it's, it's something we spoke a little bit about um, last episode, which you guys won't have seen yet because uh, it's not out there, uh, but about the way that you manage people's workloads. So traditionally, it's always been your bum's on a seat from 9 till 5.30, therefore you're doing a week's worth of work, which isn't necessarily true. But I think a lot, of, and we've always worked differently because we're very much project um, and delivery based. But I agree. I think the way that you manage people is around about you should be delivering these things this week. So what is if you deliver this in a day or you deliver this in a week, then you've probably done a week's worth of work. If you don't deliver that, you need to give us a good reason why not, why you've installed or if you do deliver it, fine. You've done a week's worth of work. You've justified your paycheck. So I think that mentality for a lot of companies now needs to happen if they haven't had that. And that's something we spoke a bit about um, last time. So um, well, there is, there is, so there are many industries that, that are never going to be able to work from home. So like the people working in factories and, you know, making toilet paper and driving trucks and things like that, that'll never change. Um, but, but the, the, the ones that are like us, like that are just office workers. I mean, I, I see absolutely a, a, a big change coming to once we go back, um, Having the ability to work from home is is different, but like you said, and I've seen a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people about this topic, and and they're having to do. They started out like maybe two weeks ago, having to do a daily report of every hour that they spent working. You know, nine o'clock I did this, ten o'clock I did this. You know, and that's gone to the wayside now, to where they're. I think a lot of these these managers that really had to essentially stand over your shoulder, right? They felt like they had to stand over your shoulder and watch your butt in a seat um, for nine hours a day or whatever, are starting to realize. You know what I. I can actually trust people. I can trust my people to get their work done. They're not going to sit around and watch TV all day or eat, you know, cakes and you know whatever. They're actually going to work. And and I think that um, that's a good realization for for companies to be able to have. Um, and, and it's happening rapidly. So when, if we were to do this next week, I'm sure this would be a different conversation. But that's what I'm seeing is that it's starting to change to where that kind of trust is starting to be empowered to the employees to to get the work done. I was going to say trust is really important here um, and for us it wasn't a big change anyway because we weren't counting the hours in the day. <laughs> uh, I think that's a very antiquated method of measuring someone's success, you know, putting in more hours than necessary doesn't make you more efficient um, as we know. Um, so yeah, for us, it's always about trust and, you know, our employees are adults. We trust them with their workloads. We don't need to babysit them. Um, they know what they need to do and they know what they need to do for the customers, for the business and for everything to move forward. 
Now, you are going to get people in the business, though, who are going to take advantage of the situation. We're all people, we do events like this because we're kind of people who go there, we're enthusiastic. So our nature is probably that we, we work really hard. But there are going to be people in a lot of organizations, especially when you get to the kind of numbers of Deloitte or you get to some uh, some other kind of industries. Um, people are going to say, great, no one's watching me, so I can actually just take the mix. So you are going to get a lot of people. So how do you how do you sort the wheat from the chaff? Um, I so I'd say let's not punish everyone because of the odd ones out. <laughs> yeah. um, second of all, I think it will be noticeable by their management at some point. It has to come across. They can't just not do anything for a long amount of time. And no matter what they work in, you know, if, if they're in sales, their numbers definitely won't come through. Or, uh, yeah, it depends on what they do. But I'm sure it will be noticeable uh, after a period of time. So you want to trust that hierarchy then, because if you have laziness up the chain that doesn't report it, then maybe you miss that. So it's trusting your, your hierarchy at some point it will be captured and accountability will be. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So just to switch the conversation slightly. Um, so for the people who are traditionally office based, who have probably never home worked in the past, how has their mental health been? Um, you know, how have they coped with the transition? How have they coped with having the family around if they are used to home working? How have they coped with cabin fever of never leaving the house? If, if we had any people that have struggled with it and have, what have we done to kind of help those people? So I can start. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not used to working from home either, <laughs> so it's uh, it's definitely been, I'd say, um, at first a bit challenging because obviously you're you're just not used to it. Uh, but what we are doing is, so we've launched all sorts of ideas across the board. So we have happy hours, we have virtual coffee breaks. Uh, like I said, we try to keep connected with uh, everyone just to make sure that everyone's okay. Um, we have a global <laughs> workout session <laughs> at noon every day, um, and it's done by one of our colleagues in Germany. <laughs> so we do that Monday to Friday. He's very on it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is which has been very good and very beneficial because then people pitch in with what sort of workouts they've been doing, um, like going for I'll a run. I'll do right after this call, actually. Right after this call, I'm doing exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> um, and we have, we call them team huddles. So we have regional huddles, uh, cross regional huddles. Um, we even had uh, some uh, meditation sessions. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think we're I think we're trying um, everything that we can, and I think it's working uh, for people with kids. Um, I know it's been a bit harder for them, but what I've heard as feedback is that they sort of do it in shifts working hours so uh, you know one person would work for two three hours then they swap and uh, you, you know what i find is awesome about that though is is that it's always been working from home has always been kind of like that and i'm sure you've all seen the the uk guy that uh, had the kid run in and the mom you know jumped in and pulled the kid out or whatever but you know i, I i'm literally waiting for that to happen right now <laughs> In fact, last you know week, he opened the door and his little face was there around the door from the one we did last week. Yeah. Well, you know what's awesome now is is that that's just accepted and and you get to see you know I've had many conference calls with people with kids in their lap and they're just hanging out and 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 I love that because it's not a taboo thing that you know your kid is to walk into the room and you know and all that I mean it's just accepted because everybody's working from home. It's real. Another, awesome, thing, right? well, another thing that I've seen people do often now is for many for. 10 years now, all I've done on conference calls is looked at people's avatars. That's all I've seen is just a, their company picture of themselves. And I've noticed that people are turning their cameras on more so you yeah. can see people. And I love that. I think yeah. that's an amazing shift for us anyway. And I don't know if it's been that way for you guys, but yeah. for us same, being- Same said last week, that's been noticed. And I agree, uh, people now are turning the, the cameras on. I've noticed that. And it's great because we were talking a bit about um, information theory. Um, last week, so you go on email or text message and you get a certain amount of information, but you get no intonation or character on, on the way somebody expected to say that. So you read it in the way that you think they meant it, which could be totally wrong. 
but then you go on to voice, you get a little bit of voice and intonation there on a, on a telephone call. Come on to video, you get a little bit more, so you can see micro gestures, you know, it's like, yeah, I really like that idea, and yeah, you start to see a bit more. You still lose something, I think, from, from um, you know, I think John Levesque was saying, you, you, you miss the aura of someone for being in a room. So we're still not completely there. I don't think we completely replace the face-to-face, -face, but you're right, we're kind of, it's a step closer to be able to really get what people mean. So, yeah, that's been noticed uh, I think a few, by a few people. We encourage emojis if it's in writing as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, I, do you know, I was, I was, I've been dead against emojis and business communications for such a long time. I just find it tacky and horrible and not professional. But actually, you're right. Now I get it. Now I do encourage it. I do include it. I do accept it. And you're right. I think it does help. It gives that little bit of. Yeah. You know, oh, I am being sarcastic. Cause there's a little crying yeah. emoji in there. You know, crying, laughing in there. So. It helps. The other thing that we've been doing, again, we touched on it last week, so I won't go into it in a lot of detail, but we're doing VR stand-ups as well. So, um, in fact, actually, right. So we do our normal stand-ups in Microsoft Teams, where we talk about work, but twice a week, we're actually having a, a VR social. So everyone's got Oculus Go headsets or Oculus um, Quest headsets. So twice a week for an hour, the end of a Wednesday, the end of a um, Friday, we all get into Altspace VR, we shoot hoops together, we play darts, and it's not work talk, it's just, so again, you get another level of interaction, you get a level of immersion that you don't get here, you're surrounded by people, you're seeing where they are, they're flying off, and it's, it's an immersive experience, so that is helping people feel that community. Again, we don't have the facial expressions, but that's something we find helps to bring that community back together, like the virtual coffee break. So. Of course, there's a reliance there on having VR headsets. It's easy when we're a smaller organization, um, but that we're finding that helps and people really are into that. And a lot of people who resisted VR before are actually quite keen to, to give that a go because they do feel like they're in a room with someone and breaking out of this you know, cupboard that I'm sitting in all day to hide away from my family. So we find that helps a lot. Yeah, we were going to start a PlayStation tournament as well. I think FIFA. Yeah. But there is a risk that we just spend the entire day playing games and doing social stuff and it not only work, so I guess it could go it's too far. After, after working out. <laughs> so, so about trusting your employees, back to that topic here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it hasn't started yet. I'll keep you posted. No, no that's fantastic, though. I've, I've not thought about or considered the, uh, the, the, my son has an Oculus Rift, and I haven't considered that aspect of, of, of really getting with people. And and I'm gonna my takeaway from this call right now immediately is gonna I'm gonna find out who's got an Oculus so we can maybe get together and do some darts or anything. There is a lot of people. There's a lot of people in our community who have got this. So I've been talking to a bunch of people over the last few days. We're going to set up a, a VR uh, meetup, a VR user group, um, sometime in the next couple of weeks just to bring people in. I tried it two years ago. There wasn't the uptake. I think a lot more people in, in now have access to it. I still think it will be low and limited. I'm not expecting a huge turnout, but I think if we can progressively build it, but Maybe people are more inclined to try it now, but yeah, keep your eye out. I'll uh, share details. But we've, we've please do, please do. That would be fantastic. I'm in 100%. There's a lot of people in our community here who, who have got it, so yeah, something we're definitely got. Okay, so let's look at mindfulness then. So we spoke a little bit uh, about some of the initiatives that have been going on to promote sort of mindfulness and wellness, um, the virtual coffee. Uh, meetings, things like that, and the virtual exercise groups, I think they're fantastic. So I guess, Pom, do you want to talk a little bit more about what you've heard the guys say on that and maybe what else, you know, maybe we can try as well? Yeah, so um, so with Human Method, um, the best way to start, I think, is to explain, like, what what it's all about. And, uh, and, it's, and it, it's pretty much right here. So Human is the method that, that I use. So it's it's habits, mindset, activity, nourishment with you at the heart, right? So it's taking the, the human first and then adding all those elements around it rather than what normally happens is, and whether that's a, a health or wellness program or whether it's a business, what normally happens is with, a, with, with some businesses that, that the business has this way of working and then someone has to come into it and adapt to that way of working rather than taking that human and going, okay, cool, this is our business, these are our values. How do we work together to get you to work the best way and, and uh, optimal, right? And, and that suits both parties. So that, that's the first thing. And, it, and it's kind of having those conversations where we really try and find out where the, where the individual is and, and, w and what they need in that moment. And so in terms of um, like mindfulness, um, first thing is, 
is that obviously we're in such uncertain times at the moment that anxiety levels and stress levels are so high and a lot of people will potentially not express those that we discussed earlier you know that they might just say yeah, yeah i'm fine and um and actually you know making it very clear in, in communications that you know it's okay to, to feel anxious to feel stressed but then um being able to have those those tools available that we can actually help you know whether it's your staff or whether it's for yourself uh, to be able to minimize that as much as possible so um we discussed earlier in terms of meditation so something i do with my clients a lot is we meditate um now the word meditation has a stigma to it which you know i, I coach a lot of guys uh which straight away you, you mentioned meditation they're like Phew, right um but uh all, all meditation is breathing right and focusing on your breath so if you're if you're if we're about to work out or do something and i'm i'm technically explaining to someone how to breathe into their diaphragm and take them through that process of not breathing into the chest and breathing into the belly and taking a breath maybe maybe we do like a, a three four five breath is, is a version of this where we breathe in for three fill the belly four for four and then breathe out for five right and just that process of breathing into belly is different because we're so used to breathing into the chest that your mind is already focused on your breath if it's focused on your breath it's not focused on uh what's going to happen with lockdown am i going to get paid what's going to happen with work what am i going to do with my family right so all of a sudden for maybe three four five minutes of breathing those thoughts aren't there and i'm able to just re recenter myself to uh, just to feel a little bit better Does that make sense yeah, we, we actually, um, so, and this is something that I've, I've started doing as well. We, we've had a, um, uh, every two weeks, it looks like they're scheduling a meditation session for our, our employees around the firm or whatever, and you can just join and, and do exactly that. Um, and I joined my first session this morning at nine o'clock uh, in my time in the morning. It was one of the most fantastic things I've ever done. Right. I mean, and, and it's we've never done this before. I, I, I don't know why. I guess it's just because it's just not been thought of or whatever. But I can't wait until the next one. And I hope that this is something that we can do to carry forward to to let people have time to meditate and just sit there and and concentrate on breathing and just releasing and, and, and stepping away. Um, like I feel 100 percent better today after going through that and it was only like a 45 minute just class it was talking about you know the you know being mindful and and and, and appreciating things that you might not have appreciated before you know and, and all this stuff and i came out just feeling a hundred percent better i mean it was just it changed every it changed my day um and, and and i hope it's something that we can continue to do as an organization because this is something that you, it's a soft thing, right? And, and you don't think about people's mental health or, or as much before. And we've touched on this, you know, uh, on the call already, but this is something that we have to watch and we have to, we have to be mindful of. Um, and, and I just, I believe that this is a game changer for, for the firm, for my firm. Yeah, so I think a couple of points on that as well is, um, again, I've experienced in the past um, through my children where we went through, um, the hypnobirthing program. So we spend a lot of time there talking about breathing. It was around the birth of children, but a lot of the techniques there are also kind of self-meditation, things like that, relaxation, dealing with stress, dealing with worry, things like that. So been through all that before, and I I took that forward, and I think that was awesome. So again, bringing that into here and how we deal with stressful situations is great. Um, another point you made, Rob. Um, oh, I forgot what it was now. Oh yeah, so about actually continuing this stuff in the future. How organizations do that if lockdown was lifted in the next two weeks i think a lot of the stuff that we're starting to do would then fall by the wayside and people would just stop doing so i guess the question is how long does this need to go on before that becomes business as usual so actually in some cases if this goes on for three months or six months a lot of these programs will be instilled far more in people's psyche therefore they are more likely to carry on in the future so i guess the question how long do we think this needs to happen to continue so that we do keep doing this stuff going forward, because it is important, and it's made us realize how important it is. 
I don't know how I'm asking that to just in general. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it, ha- I think it has to, it, it, because we've never thought about that before, and now we've got so many more people working remote. I think for us, it's gonna, it's gonna continue that way, right? We're gonna continue to allow people to work remote no matter what, and I think for for us, um, it, it's just something I, I think that I don't know if it will or not. Um, I'm not responsible for that program or whatever, but I mean it makes sense to me to look at having somebody, maybe this is a new career path, right? Mm-hmm. That companies start hiring people full time, like um, to, to lead these sessions, right? To where this is something that's so important for the way people, their mindset and all of that. I, I think it's critical. I, I think it's a critical service that, that we have to look at doing. So yeah, Rob, this, this falls into HR, really, doesn't it? Because this is around looking at the people. There's a res- uh, there's a responsibility to make sure our people are are happy. Also, if we are more aware, we also then take on additional responsibility to deal with it. So if someone does come come to us, then we have a responsibility to do that. So I guess HR would be something that would take that for because it is a, a people issue. Yes, of course. Um, and I was going to say we. Um, at the, when we were in the office as well, we had people going for their workouts over lunch or, you know, doing the yoga sessions or whatever they, they wanted to do over, over their lunch breaks. Um, so, but I, I'm not sure how it will come into play when everyone's sort of back to normal uh, whilst people would still, I think we still have to stay connected in a way and, uh, you know, to, to carry doing these things that we felt were really beneficial for us whilst working from home. But people might feel differently. They might not want to join. They might want to join their own things. They might want to do their own things in the evenings or, you know, but yeah, it, it would be a good initiative to 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 move forward, I think. Tom, do you think the uh, full-time Maharishi is a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, if companies start putting this into play themselves, it puts me out of a job. Um, <laughs> Unless you're the one that delivers it for them, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I exist because of all these people that are, you said it, Rob, you know, you felt at ease after your meditation session this morning, which means that if you felt at ease after it, before it, you must have been in dis-ease, right? And dis-ease is just, it's disease, right? And that's what it leads to. So when we look at things like disease and an illness, they all come from our emotions and our mental health and, and, and our physical health, what we eat, it's all encapsulated. It's not just one thing, right? It's our whole lifestyle. So the first step is actually realizing that, wow, I can feel better from doing a bit of breathing. That is so powerful, right? Well, if I can get, I can feel better from just doing a little breathing in the morning. What if I did a little bit of breathing every morning and I did a little bit of movement throughout the day and I drank more water and I went for my walk and, and I did that daily, right? Um, what, what I have a human method is uh, with, with my guys, we call them base camp habits. And the reason I call them base camp habits is because when you, when you climb Everest, um, you start at base camp, right? The actual climb itself starts at base camp. But for some people, base camp is a destination, right? So uh, like 90% of the people don't actually climb Everest. They get to base camp and they're like, sweet, I've done, I've done Everest now and now I'll go. And that's, that's a three week journey to, to Everest, right? Uh, sorry, to base camp. But then the journey above that is like, that's just the next level. You know, you've got to be a highly skilled climber to do that. Most people, when they think of their health and fitness, they're thinking about climbing Everest to the top from base camp upwards. And what they don't realize is that we're not even at base camp yet. We're, we're, we're operating at so below base camp. We're operating dehydrated, malnutritioned, usually lack, um, like lack of sleep, right? Um, we're not breathing correctly and we're not moving. And then we're trying to perform optimal day in, day out. And, and we just can't do it. So when people come into some kind of health and fitness program, um, what they tend to do is go straight into a fitness program and they miss out the health part. So they'll go straight into doing a hit class or a spin class or something along those lines. And then they wonder why they hit a brick wall in three weeks and quit because they're not actually ready for it. Their body physically isn't ready for it, right? Uh, and mentally it's not ready for it. So our base camp habits 
the goal is to get you to just up to, to, to just operate as a human being, as a normal human being, as we should be, which is hydration, get enough sleep, uh, move daily. Uh, that doesn't mean work out. That just means like walking, uh, doing a bit of mobility, uh, just just moving as much as possible. Uh, we, I call them movement snacks, um, which is where we just you know um, replace the word wait for uh, move. So you know if I'm waiting for the kettle, I'll move for the kettle instead. So I'll just do something, you know, do some mobility exercises while I'm waiting for the kettle to boil, or you know whatever it is, and. Um, and those base camp habits are, are my indication for someone who's actually getting to that baseline. When we're at that baseline, then we can start adding all the all the fun stuff, which is the strength exercises and the classes and all that kind of stuff. But initially, it starts with those little things. Cool, perfect. That I think that's great. I think that's really useful. So definitely things I'm going to think about um, on that. And I think that's good for everyone to hear. Um, right. I think the last five minutes. Um, quick. Quick fire round, um, just top tips for home working. What do you, what do you find the kind of top tips? So either pros, cons, just things people just So we, we actually have a couple of blogs on it. <laughs> one is about top tips and the other one is how to best work from home with your kids around. <laughs> I, let me know after, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video when we, when we put it up. So yeah, that'd be useful. I will do. But I think the main takeaways are Take breaks, people. Um, do some exercise at least 30 minutes a day. Make sure your desk uh, chair is set right so that you don't even you don't get more pain in your back, in your lower back, etc. Don't strain yourself. Um, and yeah, try to keep connected with everyone. I'd say. I would, I would like to add on to those are all fantastic. I 100% agree. Um, one thing that I also encourage people to do is is treat your laptop. We all have laptops, right? But treat your laptop like it's a desktop. Don't carry it around with you, right? When it's time to get up and walk away, get up and walk away. Uh, don't carry your laptop with you and have a dedicated space for working. Um, don't work on the couch today and then at the kitchen table tomorrow and at the you know whatever. Um, have a dedicated space so that you know that's where I go work and then you can walk away because it's so important to have your home space as your home space, not everything being your workspace. Yeah, definitely. No, that, that's that's one thing my key ones that came up last week, and I agree. Um, now, for some people, that's difficult. Some people don't have a big enough house or have space they can set up, so they have to work in the bedroom. But yeah, again, that divide. Um, a tip last week, which I thought was fantastic, someone even said a pop-up desk, put the ironing board up, standard the ironing board, do it, and you put the ironing board down at the end and go, and then your space is gone. I thought that was magic. You know. seems yeah. yeah. Pop. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think in terms of working from home, uh, something that I that I don't do, so I've had to really adapt, is actually like creating that space that's a, that's a work environment, you know, and and keeping that work environment the work environment, a bit like what Rob said. Um, what I've what I've really learned to do is block out my time for work and make sure that if I'm blocking out of time for work, then I'm blocking out of time for work. But equally, if I'm blocking out time for work, block out the time for play, block out the time for relaxation, block out the time for the meditation, block out the time for when you're going to go out for a walk, and actually just routine, routine, routine. Um, something that I've, is, is what I said in the intro, which is not practicing what I preach. Something that I've just this week has just been like transformational for me is that I wake up at six still, um, not just. I don't have to, but I still do because it's important to keep that routine. Um, I have a I have a session in the morning after a glass of water. I go out for two hours. I go for like a run walk, uh, whatever that. I mean, it was more run yesterday, less walking today. It was more walking, less running. Right. Um, I got back. I had another session. I had a coffee. I then had two hours of work time, and then I've got a little trumpet just at the back there where I just bounce around. So in between. If I get stuck in a thought, I'll just go out, bounce around on my little trampoline, um, and then come back in and, and, and carry on for a little bit. And and then when, when my work day is done, my work day is done. Just like you said, Rob, shut the laptop, done for the day. And then it's just like you would be um, getting home from work and doing all the things that you, you love to do when you get home, you know, playing with the kids, whatever it is you need to do. 
It's not, I mean, that's so important because this whole conversation that we had last episode, we we're talking about today, we talk about how do you enable people to work from home? But one of the most important bits of that is how do you get people to stop? It's so easy to mm-hmm. just sit and carry on working. You're not commuting yeah. home. Yeah. You've got, it's so easy to just kind of work control. through. It's having that space, which they close it in. Knowing when to stop is so important as well. Well, I've, I've seen a trend on meetings, right? Because it's so easy to sit for 10 or 12 hours in back-to-back meetings with no breaks. And I've seen a trend for us to where if you have a 30-minute meeting, it's being shortened to 25 minutes. If you have an hour meeting, it's being shortened to 50 minutes, right? To where... If you can get it done, if you need 30 minutes, you can get it done in 25. There's no doubt, right? But it gives you that break that you need to catch up on email or to go to the bathroom or get a snack or whatever, right? They're just basic human needs uh, that you don't think about. And that, that's one of the questions I've been answering a lot for people at Deloitte is how do you go to the bathroom? How do you just, you know, and, and sometimes it might mean you miss a meeting because you have to have lunch, but you have to, you have to own your schedule and you have to be responsible for taking that time that you need to go to the bathroom to eat to 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 walk away um and that's okay and it's okay and i think that's important to tell people that it's okay have you have you seen the very unfortunate video of the the lady who um isn't used to video calling thought she put herself on mute went to the bathroom didn't realize the video was still running Joe, you know I, I feel worse for the person who actually shared that other i mean that's that was just cruel and nasty but yeah <laughs> there's the downside I think these days uh, it's more about work-life integration yeah. Yeah. and not, yeah, not sure. anymore about work-life balance. That's a know? great thought, work-life balance, work and life, work and life actually integrate, why not bring yeah. the two together a bit more? I love that thought. Do you know what? I think we're on time. I think that is a lovely thought to finish on. Um, so I just want to thank all of you very, very much. Um, that was really useful, some great content there. I think a lot of stuff's going to help a lot of people. So thank you so much for joining me today, and um, we'll see you next week. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for joining the Isolation Conversation. Visit our website, www.thisisotolo.com for the latest information or hit the subscribe button and the like button to make sure you never miss an episode. Whilst you're at it, if you found value in this episode, we'd really appreciate you leaving a comment below or sharing a link to the show with your friends and colleagues and that would really help us out. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode and until then, it's a huge thanks from me for watching.